Hey everyone, a lot of filler in the newspapers this week about Brexit. Essentially nothing of substance has happened for a few days and there's no proper developments as such, but at the same time there's no debacles from the White House to discuss and from a legal perspective the newspaper lawyers would certainly prefer that their columnists discuss rumours about Philip Hammond than those surrounding Harvey Weinstein. The supposed Brexit battle is that Philip Hammond has refused to set aside money in case there's no deal, whereas other ministers say we need to at least acknowledge that there's a possibility of it happening, otherwise we don't have a proper negotiating position. At the same time though, the EU said that the talks aren't going anywhere anyway until the UK writes out a cheque, a huge cheque too, you know, the sort of cheque that Nigel Farage might sign after a big Friday lunch at Simpsons, the sort of cheque that a locksmith might make you write out if you're unlucky enough to need his services on a bank holiday Monday. There are, of course, some legitimate reasons for some kind of settlement. You know, we've got pensions from the UK civil servants that the EU has employed in the EU for the last couple of decades. Uh, there's our commitment to scientific projects that's going to continue for a couple of years to come. But the EU's costs aren't itemised in any way, and there's absolutely zero explanation of where they got their suspiciously ballpark 100 billion figure from, other than perhaps just reading a beginner's guide to negotiating and guessing that if they go in silly high like that, then the UK will somehow be obliged to meet them halfway in the middle, because that's presumably how they think business works when there's no option of bribery on the table. Perhaps we should just copy their approach, mind, play silly buggers, claim that Brussels owes us money, then meet them halfway in the middle. Yeah, sort of zero pounds. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these clicks, subscribe. Bye.